Hello, today we're going to be making an abstract plaque with air dried clay. My name is Ladera McKinnon, a teaching artist at Clayworks in Charlotte, North Carolina. This video is presented by Clayworks in Charlotte, North Carolina and sponsored by Culture Blocks, a community partnership between ASC, Charlotte Mecklenburg Library, Mecklenburg County Park and Recs to bring arts and culture experiences closer to where residents live. Culture Blocks is funded by Mecklenburg County. What came in your kit is air dry clay, acrylic paint, a skewer, and a paintbrush. What you will need from home, a workspace, a small dish of water, and items found around the house for texture. If you have a piece of cardboard hanging around, you're going to need that today. If you don't, you can use a plastic bag that your air dry clay came in. First, we're going to break off one third of your clay for a slab. Slab, a flattened or rolled out piece of clay. For your plaque, it can be any shape that you would like. I'm going to be doing a oval plaque. When you flatten your slab, you want to press down and slide your hand. Flip it over every now and then so it doesn't stick to your surface. Also applying a little bit of pressure as you slide your hand. You want your slab to be about the width of your pinky's width. As you start to get to the edges of your slab, you can use your two fingers to gently press them together so it gets a nice edge. This is when you can use a piece of cardboard or the plastic bag to help you to shape your plaque. Make sure you flip your slab to be able to shape the edges on the back. Once you finish shaping your slab, you're going to take one finger, dip it in your water, and smooth out the edges and the top of your slab. Before we start creating the pieces that will go on top, you want to check the width of your slab so that it is thick enough that it will hold pieces that go on top. Now it's time to create the abstract pieces that will go on top. Abstract art that does not attempt to represent external reality but seeks to achieve its effect using shapes, forms, colors, and textures. Abstract can be organic shapes or non-representative art. I'm starting out by breaking this other extra clay in half and then breaking that into smaller pieces. These can be small, medium, and large. When making your pieces, you can start out by just rolling different balls and different types of shapes. They can be circles, they can be rectangles, whatever you would like. At the end, you don't have to use every single piece that you make. You can do circles by rolling a ball in your hand and then flattening it. One way that you can figure out what type of shapes you want to use is by mapping out what you want to use. So I'm just placing my piece there and then going to work around it. I'm even going to roll out a coil to be able to use. Coil, a rolled out rope of clay like a worm or a snake. When you roll out a coil, you roll it in your hand back and forth as if you were cold. Or you can roll it on the table back and forth like a 360. Since these are pretty small, I'm just rolling them in my hand and then I'm flattening them to get a oval shape. This is just one way how to figure out what shapes that you want on your pot. Just make sure that you are doing small, medium, and large pieces. You don't want all of your pieces to be the same size.
The second way that you can map out how you want your abstract pieces to be placed is by just creating all your pieces and then placing them one by one after everything is finished. I personally like the second option because I can really see if I have small, medium, and large pieces. To get some of those smaller coils, I went ahead and rolled a really skinny coil. And just using the stick that came with my kit to just cut them into little pieces. This is kind of like pasta. Alright, so now it's time to map out what I want on my plaque. I'm just playing around and not thinking too much about it. I know for sure I do want a small, medium, and large pieces on here. Before we get too far in our project, I'm going to make a hole up top. You can put a hole in either side of your plaque depending on how you want this to be hung. I'm placing a hole up top using the flat end of my stick and going all the way through in a circular motion so it's big enough. When it comes to mapping out where you want your pieces to be, everything does not have to be straight so I'm just playing with the coils to give them a wavy look. Since I know where I want my pieces to be able to go, I'm going to slip and score to attach them. Score and slip score. The process of incising surface of wet or leather hard clay in a cross hatching pattern before applying slip and joining clay. Slip is watered down clay used for joining clay together. For this project, we are using water. Now that I know where my pieces are going to go, I am going to do some scratching. I like to do plus signs and X's to really overlap them to attach. Now one thing, since these pieces are really small, I am dipping the sharp end of my stick in my water because it's holding the water on the stick so I don't have to go and dabble these small little pieces. I'm going to attach each one. I'm not being too careful about it, making sure it's really scratched up as well. Now that all your pieces are attached, you're going to take a little bit of water on your finger and just rub out any of the scoring marks that have overlapped and just making sure that they are attached. Now it's time to add some texture to your surface. This can be lines, polka dots, anything that you would like to add.
you finish with your texture, you're going to let your plaque dry for about 24 to 48 hours. Since your plaque is dry, you can go with any color scheme that you would like. I'm going to do colorful pieces with a dark background so my bright colors can pop out. I'm starting out with a light layer of paint on each piece. Once this layer is dry, I'm going to do a second layer on each one of these pieces so that they are solid. I'm remembering to clean my brush in between each color. Also, don't worry about being too careful when adding your color on these individual pieces because the background is going to be darker. If your background is not a dark color, I would try to be a little bit careful when you paint. Now it's time for the background. I'm making sure that I just work carefully around each piece. You can use black or dark brown. I'm using dark brown. When painting this area, you want to hold your brush closer to the tip so you have more control over your brush. After your background is dry and you've done your second layer of paint on your abstracted pieces, you can go back in with your stick with the sharp end and redefine the texture that you created. And there you have it, an abstract plaque. 
Thank you for watching this video and thank you to our partners.